Alpha Case Study Current Reality Tree. Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we are going to build and read a current reality tree. The case is about a company which is facing a decline from being leader in its business to a follower's rank, dashing to keep up with the new leader and responding to the new leader's initiatives or new product introduction with late and more expensive Me Too solutions. During the first interviews with managers, I picked some of what they consider undesirable effects and without losing too much time, give you all the details and background about the case, I'll invite you to follow the building of the current reality tree. Step by step, you will understand what the trouble is. For starting our current reality tree, I picked up three undesirable effects, or UDs, which are serious concerns to the management. My three picked UDs are the one numbered 100, we suffer from price war. Then we have number 300, with our survival is at stake. And number 200, our processes are full of waste and not efficient. A side note here, what qualifies as an undesirable effect? The Theory of Constraints Handbook, the 2010 edition, on page 697, explains that a new DE is a complaint about an ongoing problem that exists in the reality and because of this problem the system cannot perform better. In our case, check. It is a description of the state, not an action. Check. It is within your area of responsibility. I truly believe these UDs are, so check. Something can be done about it. Hopefully yes, check. It must not blame someone. It must not be a speculated cause. It must not be a hidden solution to the problem or wishful thinking of solving the problem. It should contain one entity. It should not include its cause in its verbalization. Check all of that. It should be factual and not subjective. Yes, it can be proven by figures from financial statements, so check. It should be a complete sentence. They are, check. You these are symptoms noticeable effects from which we start to build our tree down to the critical root causes. So I'll start with number 200 and ask why our processes are full of wastes and not efficient. The answer is department's objectives are not aligned on a common goal. And why is that? Because there is no coordination of objectives by the senior management. Right, and we know that without alignment of objectives on a common goal, many of them will contradict each other and contradicting objectives lead to wastes and inefficient processes. So now if we combine these three entities number 210, 220 and 230 through the ellipse figuring an end connector, we can read if department's objectives are not aligned on the common goal and without alignment of objectives on the common goal Many of them will contradict each other and conflicting objectives lead to wastes and inefficient processes. Then our processes are full of wastes and not efficient. NTT 220 and 230 have been added in order to strengthen the logic. This is an input of general knowledge about management and systems dynamics. It isn't specific to the company. I go back to number 210 and ask why are the department's objectives not aligned on a common goal? And the answer is there is no coordination of objective which becomes entity 240. I leave this for now and I go over to entity 300 which states our survival is at stake and ask why is it so? Well, first, because surviving in this competitive business requires frequent investment and financial resources are more and more limited. Obviously, having fewer and fewer resources makes it difficult to invest or to ask for funding. So ultimately, the survival might be at stake. Let's go over to Entity 100 and ask why do we suffer from price war? The answer is because our margins plummet. Why do our margins plummet? Because our sales go down on one hand, because our margins are low and we have to offer discounts on the other hand. Why do the sales go down? Because we lose many customers to competition. And why is that? 
because in a commodity market customers purchase at best price and our prices are above competitors. Let's see why our financial resources are more and more limited. This is because inefficiencies and wastes burn resources without gain. You may wonder why I switched from one branch to another. First, because I don't want you to get bored. Second, because in reality, this process of investigating the causes is often iterative, requiring different subject matters to be called in or asked for facts, figures and explanations. In real life, the building of a current reality tree can be a bit like this switching back and forth. I continue to investigate the lack of alignment and I am told that managers define themselves objectives for their department and this is because there is no corporate strategy stated onto which aligning the objectives. When clarifying what no strategy means, the explanation is we are followers and our developments are merely copying the leader. So why do we need to copy the leader? The reason is that in the current situation we cannot afford drifting away from our core business, which of course needs further explanation given by entity 320. The financial resources are more and more limited and there is a need of new products and service development in order to escape the death spiral. We assume everybody understands that developing new products and services require investment. Therefore, we don't dig deeper from Entity 350. This is a general rule. When you come to a level of general knowledge or knowledge largely shared, you stop investigating. From now on, we have a lateral connection linking our three initial UDs together. We still need to dig deeper to uncover the critical root causes, but I guess at that point you got the idea. We dig down asking why and check by reading bottom-up, using the cause and effect logic to check if the answer makes sense. In order to save time, here is the current reality tree completed. If you don't stay with me for the complete reading bottom-up, here are some more important things about this current reality tree. You can see there is one entity, number 180, which is common to all branches. It is the lowest in the tree, but still lying within the span of control of the company's management, which means something can be done about it. This qualifies entity number 180 as the critical root cause. If this cause can be neutralized, then the whole tree will collapse and the undesirable effects will disappear. To be complete, I'd like also to display what we call negative reinforcing loops here in red. The first loop goes from entity 270, our development are merely copying the leader, and goes reinforcing the fact that the company is a follower because the more the company copies the leader and the more it confirms itself as a follower. The second reinforcing loop goes from entity 340, which states, in this current situation, we cannot afford drifting away from our core business. And this reinforces the fact that we do not stand out among our competitors, which is entity 190. As long as we keep doing what everybody else does, we cannot distinguish ourselves. So we keep being trapped in this vicious circle with many competitors having similar offers, customer not interested in our products, sales dropping and so on. The third loop goes from entity 200, which states our processes are full of waste and not efficient. And you see that for the sake of better understanding, I have a duplicate one here, which goes combining with the margin plummeting and all these inefficiencies and waste burning resources without gain, which too limits our financial resources and creates problems. Once your current reality tree is completed and scrutinized, once you're confident in its logical robustness, you are ready to present it. What are the reading and presenting options available to you? Well, it depends on your audience and what facts you want to highlight, what message you want to convey. This is more about communication, sales of your conclusion and marketing of your ideas than a pure logic thing. Once you are clear about the relative importance of the facts to highlight and messages to convey, leave the most important one for the end, because people usually remember better the last things they saw, heard or read. 
but you may also choose to leave what is of most interest to the top person in the room for the end, because chances are you will spend more time on that precisely because of the VIP's interest. If your audience is mainly made of top managers with few available time and a very limited attention span, you should probably choose to present a simplified current reality tree in a form called executive summary trees. Here is the executive summary version of our current reality tree with the information reduced to what I believe is the minimum to keep for a quick walkthrough. The executive summary version purposely breaks some logic rules and good practices, therefore it is not something I would recommend for beginners. I will provide a specific video for executive summary trees and not elaborate further on them in this episode. My reading and presenting option is to start with the branch leading to UD100, then the second branch leading to UD300 and finally the last branch up to UD200. And from here we are reading the CRT bottom up. If we do not stand out among our competitors and if many competitors have similar offers, then our offering is only commodity. If our offering is only commodity, and even commodity markets, customer purchase at best price, and if our prices are above competitions, then we lose many customers to competition. If we lose many customers to competition, then sales go down. If sales go down, then our margin plummet. If our margins are low, and if we have to offer discounts, then our margins plummet. If our margins plummet, then we suffer from price war. From here, you can check if your audience is still following you or if the attendees got the way of reading and are reading ahead of you. In this later case, propose them to read for themselves and share their questions and comments as they like. This takes a lot of stress off the presenter, relief from step-by-step -step reading. Unfortunately, if the audience or important attendees insist going on with you reading aloud, well, then just do it. If our margins plummet, then our financial resources are more and more limited. If inefficiencies and wastes burn resources without gain, and if our processes are full of waste, not efficient, then again, our financial resources are more and more limited. If our financial resources are more and more limited, and surviving in this competitive business requires frequent investments, then our survival is at stake. If our financial resources are more and more limited, and escaping the death spiral requires developing new products and services, then in the current situation we cannot afford drifting away from our core business. Now I come back to entity number 180. If our offering is only commodity, then we have lost our leadership implied in launching new products or services. If our offering is only commodity and if new customers are looking for new products, then we fail to attract new customers. If we fail to attract new customers and uh, entity 150, we lose many customers to competition then customer base shrinks. If our customer base shrinks and if our customer base is smaller than competitors, then we have lost our leadership, this time in terms of customer base, market share, promoters and so on. If we have lost our leadership, then we are followers. If we are followers and if in the current situation we cannot afford drifting away from our core business, implied to develop some distinct offering, then our developments are merely copying the leader. If as followers we are merely copying the leader, then we have no strategy of our own. You noticed I condensed the reading here and implied that the strategy is the one from the leader, as all we do is developing me too products and services. It means that our strategy is defined by our competitor. If we have no strategy of our own, then manager defines their own objectives for their department. If manager defines their own objective for their departments and there is no coordination of objectives, then department objectives are not aligned on a common goal. If department's objectives are not aligned on a common goal and without alignment of objective on a common goal, 
Many of them will contradict each other and contradicting objectives lead to wastes and inefficient processes. Then our processes are full of wastes, not efficient. From here, I would explain the three negative reinforcing loops, starting with where we are at that point of the presentation. As long as our processes are full of waste, not efficient, these inefficiencies will contribute to deplete our financial resources that are more and more limited in a vicious circle. The second loop is at entity 340. As long as we cannot afford drifting away from our core business and escaping the death spiral, this is a mention of Entity 350, we cannot stand out among competitors, reinforcing our follower status. A fact also reinforced by the mere copying of the leader, this is Entity 270, trapping us in the follower status. The last thing to explain is the importance of Entity 180, our offering is only commodity, which is the common note to all our UDs. And because we have proven the chain of cause and effects linking everything together, removing this common critical root cause will neutralize everything else. As a conclusion, we have found the leveraging point, where to focus attention for solving our problems and kill three birds with a single stone, as our ancestors used to say. I do hope you have found some value and interest in this tutorial. If so, give me a thumb up and share it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and take logical care.